For those of you that are very familiar with Prison Break, in season three there is a there is a prison called Sona. Now, according to this, you know, the film, the show, this prison it's where the worst of the worst went. It had like a thousand rapists, murderers. The worst of the worst went to Sona, and the people that were outside this prison, people of course the civilians, perceived going to Sona as a one-way street. If you went in, the only way you were to get out was if you were dead. It was that bad. Now, this prison sauna was so bad that one day there was a riot that happened in the prison. The riot was so bad that the government decided to just pull out its guards out of the prison and all they did was to keep the perimeter of the prison. So it means that whatever happened to the prisons inside the guards didn't care the government didn't care incarcerated so what the worst of the worst are there men no other prison would take they rioted so badly a year ago the guards pulled out just left them to themselves a thousand thieves rapists murderers the government just stays back keeps the perimeter to them so is a one-way street what goes in never comes out their job was just to keep the perimeter. Now, there was definitely a lot of chaos inside the prison. So much chaos. Now, even amidst that chaos, still the prison members inside there had to find a way of getting organized. They got their own leader within the prison. And still, they, because of the chaos that was inside, they found it necessary to come out or to come up with rules some basic rules that at least govern or bring order to the prisons and there is a very interesting quote um, that i like the quote is uh, that you know rules are rules without them we are like savages so this is exactly how the accounting was before 1973 there were no laws there were no regulations people used to prepare financial statements the way they deemed fit it was a classic case of sonar. Imagine this, um, you have an entity that you want, you, you want financial statements to be prepared for a certain entity. You're going to get three accountants to prepare these financial statements for a certain entity. And those three accountants are all going to come up with three different financial statements for the same entity. That is how it was before 1973. Preparing financial statements there are some measurements you're supposed to make. For an example, let's say you want to measure the cost of a building. Now, if you're to measure the cost of a building in, um, in the time when they are, the prices are rising, that's a lot of subjectivity. All three accountants are not going to come up with the same uh, price or the same measurement, plus a lot of other things that are subjective. So because of the subjective nature of how we arrive at some of these figures, you will find that it is the, um, different accountants are going to come up with different financial statements for the same entity. So in a bid to bring order in this chaos, you know, to get away from the way things are, the, to, to bring order into all sanity, to the accounting profession, to ensure that there is comparability between financial statements then a group of accountants met and they sought to, you know, establish some order. So they established some, they sought to start establishing some standards on how the accounting profession needs to be governed. This was in the interest of making sure that things are uniform across the board. That if we have financial statements that are prepared for an entity in Uganda, and uh, financial statements are prepared in, in, in Kenya, these two financial statements can be compared and we can reliably compare the performances of these two entities in these two different countries because we trust that the way these financial statements were prepared, they were prepared using certain standards that are uniform across the board. So from 1973, um, a, an accounting body was created um, to, you know, 
try and bring standards and uniformity across the profession. You know, just like the way it was with Sona. Yes, the guards guarded the perimeter, but because of the chaos that was inside the prison, they decided that, hey, rules are rules. Without them, we are like savages. We have a disagreement between two dogs, a drug addict and a thief. And I condone neither, and I wash my hands of both of them. But they have an issue, and we have rules. And without rules, we are nothing but savages. Therefore, with proper respect for the rules. This fight is engaged with only one rule. No weapons. And a man versus man. Without augmentation or handicap. I'm done talking. And to bring sanity, well, they had to bring up the laws. Some of you know the chicken foot law. Please, I'm begging you. Some of you know when someone has had an issue with someone, they go in the ring and fight, and the rule was simple. Only one person comes out alive, you know, and so many other rules. You know, those that are familiar with Prison Break Season 3 know what I'm talking about. I don't think you understand the rules, friend. Only one man comes out alive. Let's get back to accounting. So, in the accounting profession, this is what happened in 1973. And so when it happened, it was on the backbone of what we call the accounting framework. So, we have such a thing as the accounting framework. The accounting framework, we have what we call the regulatory framework, and then we have what we call the conceptual framework. The regulatory framework of accounting and the conceptual framework of accounting. We are going to discuss these frameworks in detail in this video series. In today's session, I just wanted to give the difference between the regulatory framework and the conceptual framework. And uh, to explain the difference, let me try and explain it like you are having a football game. There is a football game and people are playing. It is uh, generally agreed that if football is going on, it's supposed to be fair, okay? That is the overall idea, that if we are having two teams that are playing a football game or any game, there has to be some fairness, okay? And so in order to enforce that fairness, we establish rules, a rule like no cheating. So you will find that we have a rule called there's no cheating, that's a rule, but that rule is as if is, is it is being brought forward to foster an idea or to foster a theory and that theory it is trying to enforce or foster is the theory of that the game has to be fair so as a result of the theory or the idea that the game has to be fair then we have a rule no cheating Plus, so many other rules, like let's say if you, you committed a foul, this is going to be the penalty for that foul. If you behaved like this, then these are the consequences. So in other words, the rules are there, but they were created on the backbone of a certain concept. And the concept here is that the game has to be fair. In other words, fairness. So... What I've just described is basically the difference between the regulatory framework of accounting and the conceptual framework. Like the, you hear the words regulatory. Regulatory framework is, has something to do with the rules that govern accountants. In other words, this is how you should prepare financial statements. This is how you should present financial statements. Those are the rules. And that is what we're calling the regulatory framework. But in order for us to come up with these rules in accounting, the regulatory framework, it is premised on concepts. That is what we're calling the conceptual framework. The conceptual framework are theories that explain the rules. They are the whys 
why do we have this rule? In other words, the conceptual framework are the theories that are explaining the regulatory framework. So you get the idea. So in other words, what you're trying to say here is that the regulatory framework in accounting comprises of specific legally binding rules and standards imposed by authorities to ensure financial compliance. It dictates how transactions are recorded, reported, and disclosed. In contrast, the theoretical framework offers broad principles and concepts guiding the creation of accounting standards. It does not provide specific rules, but establishes specific principles like the accrual basis of accounting, the business entity concept, and so on. We are going to dive deeper into these concepts and theories as we move along in the video series. Regulatory framework is more about the, guide, the rules and the conceptual framework is more about the guiding principles and theories behind those rules. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out other awesome accounting videos on this YouTube channel. And as always guys, thank you very much for watching. My name is Arnold Kisembo Ranga Kuramia and this is Kisembo Academy. Take care.